Um, I'm a co-PI at Cedar Creek in Minnesota. The site sits at the intersection of tall grass prairie and two different forested biomes. And my executive summary for the next five minutes or less is that we've been revisiting the first experiments and studies established at Cedar Creek in 1982 to look at disturbance legacies. And we're also establishing a new network based on the net net model, exploring interactions between disturbance and nutrients at sites around the world. Next slide, please. First, for some site news, we have a lot going on, but I'll highlight two things in particular. First is that our third year site review for LTER 7 went really well. Uh, we had some great conversations and received some really useful ideas and suggestions. Um, a new NSF Biology Integration Institute, mm -hmm. ASCEND, has been awarded. Uh, it was led by Cedar Creek scientist Janine Cavender Barris. Um, this is leveraging Cedar Creek data and experiments. The idea is to cross scales of space and time using spectral biology and predictive models to study biodiversity from sub suborganismal to biosphere scales. I want to take the rest of my time to talk about work at Cedar Creek on historical legacies in the form of disturbance and recovery. Um, Forrest Isabel, Dave Tillman, Peter Reich, and Adam Clark, who are Cedar Creek scientists and a Cedar Creek graduate student, combined four decades of monitoring data from 21 old field chrono sequences at Cedar Creek to look at the responses of uh, up to about 90 years following agricultural abandonment. Each line on these graphs shows a single old field that was tracked for 40 years of this progression. Um, this work showed that the plant diversity only partially recovered to only about three quarters of unplowed fields and peak season standing biomass recovered to only about half of the unplowed fields during that century following abandonment from agriculture. So the legacy of that agricultural land use is still apparent in the reduced diversity and biomass production of the old fields after nearly a century. We followed forest study up to examine the impacts of nitrogen addition and the years since abandonment on trends in soil carbon. This was led by Eric Seabloom, who's the current Cedar Creek PI, um, with two other Cedar Creek scientists, Sarah Hobby and myself. The experimental disturbance um, in the gradient and nitrogen addition along with other nutrients was begun with the original LTER in 1982. So it gave us 40 years of monitoring data to track the responses under different nutrient conditions. And we found that across those four decades, soil percent carbon increased. It accumulated more than six tons of carbon in the top 20 centimeters over that time period. And at the highest rates of nutrient supply, in contrast to that, the gain was nearly tripled to just shy of 18 tons of carbon per hectare. So it suggests that that carbon accumulation in former agricultural fields can continue for at least many decades following abandonment and that nutrients can enhance that carbon storage in the soils. We're now moving forward to test ecological theory and to examine the generality and of course the biotic and abiotic contingencies that are associated with the responses to disturbance um, by leading this new project, Dragnet or disturbance uh, and resources ac across global grasslands. Um, this is a distributed experiment. It's led by two Cedar Creek scientists, Eric Seabloom and myself, um, and it's modeled after the nutrient network experiment that we've been leading uh, for 15 years. The experiment is a factorial combination of disturbance and nutrients, and it's currently being replicated at about 90 sites um, that are herbaceous dominated, spanning 29 countries. The sites include four LTERs, Cedar Creek, uh, George Coastal, uh, Kellogg, and Kanza. And if your LTER site wants to join this science party, just let me know. Um, it's probably best to write me an email so I don't have to keep track of it in the chat or Q&A. Um, some exciting locations and scientists have come on board. So scientists and sites in Guyana, Colombia, Nigeria, and Iran. Um, and we have really great coverage in Eastern Europe for the first time. This is just starting, so stay tuned for results in the coming years. Thank you.